Hey everybody and welcome to Talk Daily. My name is Eddie and today we're going to be talking about LiDAR. Uh, this uh, article is courtesy of the Inevitable uh, for Motor Trend and written by Mr. Frank Marcus. As always, the full article is in the description below. Um, he was talking about uh, uh, Vegas uh, Convention Center for CES 2022 and how the West Hall was added just to accommodate all the automotive technology. And seems like every booth had an automotive uh, autonomy and or electrification story to tell. Um, so this is regarding machine vision and sensing are the key to unlocking the potential of autonomy and eventually riding our roads of the 90 plus percent of vehicle collision attributing to human error and keep our goods moving with truck drivers in short supply. Um, so yeah, if you're a truck driver, let me know what you think about this. Uh, I mean, they're trying to make where the road is just basically driven by uh, robots. And you're just going to be sitting there because uh, humans make errors, humans make crash, robots wouldn't make those crash. I don't know. Is uh, is that Terminator all over again? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. But uh, I was just uh, want to... He, he, he mentions a bunch of technology. I'm just going to take one for this video, which is LiDAR. And... Um, uh, this company, SILC, they, I don't know why they picked it. They said they liked SILC. I haven't seen the other companies, but he said some 39 machine vision companies present LiDAR solutions. So there's 39 of them, okay? Don't just think this is, this is the only one. I'm not sponsored by this company or any of this article. I'm just I'm just reading it out for you guys, okay? Um, he goes, so reading on from the piece, it says, um, some 39 machine vision companies present the LiDAR solution at CES 2022. But of these uh, SILCs, frequency modulated continuous wave solution impress us the most. Uh, so here's how FMCW LiDAR works. Instead of determining distance by measuring the time it takes for a laser light pulse to go out to an object and come back again, time of flight, basically ping pong back and forth, this laser continues vary the frequency color of the light. Then they split this oscillation colored laser beam into two, routing one beam directly to the light collector while the other is projected out into the environment. But before that beam exit, it traveled through a spiral racetrack shape wave guide that measures about two meter in length, but at nanoscale all fits in a fingernail size silicone chip. These two extra meters put that nano beam color out of sync by set of amount against which the total amount is out of sync can be then used to compute the distance of the reflecting light travel out to the object and back so you have one that's a reference point and which is the one that's spinning around and you have the one that goes forward and comes back so again it's kind of a the, the same uh concept okay you can't measure a distance without having a reference and where okay so nothing has changed in that okay physics doesn't really change that much okay so um uh, the laws of physics are the same. It's just a very clever way of applying it and getting this uh, um, more accurate. So anyways, um, before I go ahead of myself, um, the advantage of the LiDAR. for uh, So when you ask me, so okay, okay, so what's the point of this? Why do we have this? So here you go. Here's the advantage. Continuous illumination greatly increased the range from 500 meters versus 200, 300 meters for most. So it ranged where you could see, where you could actually detect object and uh, provide you with data. That is important. It increased by a lot. And reduced power draw from 200 milliwatt versus 120 to 1000 watts for other. So it, obviously you can see from 120 to 1000, that's humongous, right? So th th that's the extreme end. But um, 200 milliwatts is nothing. 120 watts between 200 milliwatts to 120 watts is a lot. So it's far more efficient. And directly measures velocity as well as range, producing a cleaner image, covers a reasonable field of view, and I talk about if you have four headlamp mounted uh, in front, you can cover the whole forward field of view. So it has a lot of advantage to it. A lot, a lot. Again, and uh, the disadvantage is indium phosphate laser costs more than VCSEL type laser. So the cost is up, but practical automotive pricing is anticipated with scale. The more they manufacture, the price should drop. Technology is lower on the development curve, probably five years out. So they're saying the technology eventually is going to get dropped. Again, this is um, something that, I, you know, and maybe in the next, I believe in the next decade will be standard on vehicle LiDAR. Um, it's just amazing to see that the technology, it's finding its way into vehicles and cars are getting far, far more intelligent. But to me, uh, all this, uh, all this, um, sensors are designed so the vehicle could drive itself and make better decisions 
um, I'm, we're getting close in our lifetime. We're going to get to the point where truck drivers and driving in general is just going to be very uh, uh, automated. You just sit in the car and the car takes you where you want to go. And uh, mark my words, that's the future. Um, uh, you know, they mentioned truck drivers are in short supply. Hey, I mean, um, it's that, that that's a fact. Uh, I mean, and now we're getting into politics. So I don't get involved with that, but um, it's just interesting to, to see that, um, you know, they're talking about, um, you know, vehicle collision attributed to human error. Um, again, I don't think the human is going to be completely removed from the equation, but it's probably the, the vehicle will just make better decisions and uh, at least will give you more, um, uh, um, how should I say, the, the vehicle will be able to adapt uh, to a situation maybe human is not quick enough to adapt to. I mean, I'm just, this is out of my own imagination but anyway so um uh in conclusion i'll make other videos the mr frank marcus he talks about other sensors too i'm just gonna talk about the lidar from now uh because i think it's uh, very interesting because i understand this military application but it's finding its way into automotive is just uh, amazing and look how small it is i mean look how small it is and out of any of you are watching or an engineer or you work on this uh, matter uh, let us know in the comments below what you think um and if you are a truck driver or, um, or um, yeah, what do you think? In the road, uh, they're planning to use all this um, technology. So um, I guess trucks are just autonomous. You know, they don't need a driver. Or maybe they just need a driver just in case. Uh, let us know what you think in the comment below. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Eddie and this is Talk Daily. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye.